I wanted to go through this problem in part to show you how I think about using Excel and how you can leverage Excel to make your life a lot easier on a lot of these problems. So let's take this one. We have the, we have the chemical potential of an ideal gas. Um, so you've got a formula. This is this is essentially a plug and chug, but it's an excellent excellent example of how to use um, Excel. Um, we have h bar, which is Planck's constants over two pi. We have 0.1 liters of helium gas at 300 Kelvin. We know the mass of an individual helium atom. We know the density of the helium at 0.179 grams per liter. What we want is the ratio of the chemical potential at this temperature to that at standard temperature. So let's start building up our Excel spreadsheet. What do we know? We know the mass of helium, right? 6.6647 times 10 to the minus 27. We know um, Boltzmann constant, which is 1.380 six five times ten to the minus twenty three in we need that in joules per kelvin um we know the temperature is three hundred uh we know the volume volume is zero point one liters we know the density of helium which is zero point one seven nine grams per liter we know h bar which is uh, H bar is 1.0547 times 10 to the minus 34. Um, now, we don't know N yet, so we've got to figure out N. We can figure out, figure out N from the volume and the density. So we know the mass of the gas in grams is just this um, volume times this density, right? That's the mass in grams, but we need it in kilograms. So we just take that and we divide by a thousand. And now we're at the mass in kilograms. Okay. Um, now that we have the mass in kilograms, we need to know how many does this, how many does this, how many atoms is this, right? Well, if you take the mass of the gas we have and divide by the mass per atom, you get how many atoms we have. All right, 2.69 times 10 to the 21st atoms. Okay, now we're ready to start looking at calculating this equation. I'm not going to take that on in one big step. First, I'm going to calculate the concentration, N over V. Now, that's the inverse of what's in the equation V over the N, which means instead of multiplying by this, we'll divide by this, but N over V. And so that's going to be N over V, but this V needs to be in cubic meters. And we convert liters to cubic meters by dividing by 1,000. All right. And what did I, what did I do? Oh, yes. The other thing about Excel, it's great. It's easier to recover from your mistakes. Okay, so now we have the concentration. That's great. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and cal calculate 2 h bar squared, 2 pi h bar squared, because um, doing this in little pieces, right, makes it easier to debug when you make a mistake. So there we go, two pi h bar squared. And now I'm gonna calculate everything that's inside the three halves bracket. All right, so that's gonna be mass times Boltzmann times temperature divided by this two pi h bar we just calculated. So now I have that, and I'm gonna go ahead and calculate mu. Right, the chemical potential. So minus the Boltzmann constant times the temperature times the natural log of 
the stuff in the three halves bracket to the three halves divided by the concentration. So we now have our our result from the chemical potential for this at um, 300, 300 um, Kelvin. What it asks for, what is the ratio of the chemical potential at this temperature to that at standard temperature? All right. Here's the great thing about Excel. I'm going to copy this whole block. I'm going to paste it down here. The only thing that changes is 273.15. And voila, I have it down here, all right? And so the ratio, mu ratio that we're after is the ratio at this temperature to the ratio at standard temperature, 1.11. So um, this is just a great example of how to use Excel to your advantage and why it makes a much better calculator than your calculator. All right, hope this helps.